Hello, I'm your host, Phil Biadrone. Joining me today is editor Charles Unger. Charles, thanks for joining us. Saying that you're just an editor is probably a disservice. I know you wear many hats. So in addition to editing, what else do you do? Well, thanks, Phil, for having me. Um, I wear many hats, as you said. I'm an editor, mm -hmm. I'm a writer, I'm a director, and I'm an animator. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, the list probably goes on and on and yeah. on, you know, but those are the main credits. Um, so I, I like it that way. I, I think that the industry wants you to specialize, which is mm -hmm. a good idea, but um, if you're a director, you kind of need to know a little bit about everything. Sure. So let's back up and let's start from the beginning. Okay. How you got involved in the entertainment industry, what was your first job? So if you wouldn't mind describing a little bit of your upbringing. Where were you uh, growing up? You know, how did sure. you get involved? Um, well, I'm from a military background, mm -hmm. so we moved around a lot. My dad was in the service and my grandfather was in the service. So um, I find that creative people uh, sometimes come from military backgrounds because Ooh. they get to see a lot of the, the world and travel a lot and they're never in one location long enough right. to really call it home. So I, I embrace that experience. I've been um, everywhere from uh, Los Angeles to Sacramento, California, to the Bay Area, to Boston, Massachusetts, to New York City, which nice. is where I had my uh, you know, teenage experiences and where I went to high school. So I've been all over. Cool. And at what point did the entertainment industry call you? Was that in high school? Because a lot of the cities you mentioned, you know, they're on the coast and there's a lot of exposure to the media, a lot of exposure to film and TV. So what was that moment that you're like, you know what, I kind of feel like I'm getting a calling to editing or directing or animation or whatever it was? Well, I know this kind of sounds like a cliche for um, somebody my age, but um, really the call to adventure was seeing the original Star Wars in 1977. We're going to take a poll of how many guests say Star Wars is inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> of my age group, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the original. I mean, let's not talk about the new ones. But uh, no, I went to the theater. Um, I was, uh, you know. 77? 77. Yeah. So I was, okay. you yeah. know, should I tell you my age? But you'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, I was around nine or ten uh -huh. and um, it just blew me away, really. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I didn't articulate that um, in words. Later, I would just start drawing. I started drawing in um, class when I should have been studying. Okay. And then um, that turned into sort of doing my own comic books later, wow. a few years later, and I started drawing comic books. Um, and then my dad would show home movies on Super 8, you know, mm -hmm. of us, you know, at Army bases visiting him on the weekends. And he would like uh, rewind it and go in slow motion. And I think somewhere at that point, uh -huh. I clicked in. And yeah, and I and I saw the home movies and I saw the drawings that I was doing in the comic books. I Started was like, putting them together. And it, like, yeah, yeah, it's you don't know what you're doing, but you're just following this creative path. Interesting. So how old were you at that time? You know, maybe. Uh, yeah, let's see. I, I started drawing uh, what I call stunt stick, which was basically eight pages folded together with, uh -huh. you know, four boxes on each side. Okay. Uh, about uh, 13, 14. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, and then I started making movies shortly after that. Um, I'll go right into that if, uh, if that's all right. But what I did was I took a Saturday program at, uh, that was offered at School of Visual Arts in New York City. You would go okay. on Saturdays and you would learn how to do animation, pixelation. Wow. So you could either do cell drawing or you could take uh, action figures or, or clay yeah. and animate you know, one frame at a time and make little movies. When you say cell animation, are you talking like there's almost like storyboards laid out like a comic uh, book? Cell animation, like traditional um, hand-drawn animation where you have acetate and you have different layers. Oh, you know? so the it takes forever, right? Yeah, it <laughs> takes forever. I was like, I don't yeah. want to do that. I'd <laughs> much rather do pixelation. So yeah. I, I brought out my Star Wars figures because I was, a, as I said yeah, earlier, I'm yeah. a huge Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, you know, I got all these figures. I might as well put them to use. So yeah. um, I would come in every Saturday um, and with my Star Wars figures and then um, animate them one frame at a time. And it's a long way to make a movie that way, but eventually it did. And mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. And I think you, you just jump right into something and right. uh, you figure it out. And when this exposure is off or the focus is out, you're like, uh, I'll fix that next time. And yeah. <laughs> it was just the best way of learning. And uh, I, I really enjoyed that. So this was your first, like, experience like with formal training within the visual arts, correct? Yeah, well, actually, um, I went to High School of Music and Art in New York City, okay. which merged with uh, Performing Arts, sure. which is the Fame High School. 
Mm -hmm. So I was really lucky because half of the, the school day was devoted to art classes. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I learned, I learned um, filmmaking from the visual side. You know, different people come into filmmaking from writing, from acting. Mm -hmm. I learned more from uh, aesthetics and drawing mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So I, I did everything from oil painting to etching wow. okay. to, to architecture to sculpture. Um, I really studied visual arts in high school, and it was a great background. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up getting an uh, internship at Skidmore Owings and Merrill, where I built uh, miniature models, mm -hmm. and then of course I used that in my own Super 8 film. So it, and it, Super 8, for those of us that oh, don't know, is that 8 yeah. millimeter film? Like there's 35, which is, used to be like uh, playing in every theater, and then there's 16, and then even more nitty gritty is 8 mil. Am I, am I correct that's, on that? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. It's Super 8 because it's a little bit bigger than regular 8. Yeah. Super 8 meaning that they take the, I know I'm getting technical here, but they take the space that's normally reserved Ooh. for the soundtrack and make the actual picture frame larger. That's why they have Super 16 and Super 35. Ah. But um, yes, I started in Super 8, which is just the holes or the sprockets on one side. Right. Um, and that was the actual film. And so when you're editing, you're cutting these little films. And they had little viewers for Super 8. And the projector, which I mentioned my dad was using mm -hmm. when he showed us original home movies. Cool. Um, so yeah, so I started on Super 8. Did, did you ever feel like a draw like to maybe have that military experience like your, your, your father did? Well, there's a connection here. Well, um, like, it, it, did that inform your art in some way? <laughs> it, it did in a way that uh, they say that sometimes um, you compare a director to a general. You know, that, mm -hmm. you're, that you're leading the troops. You know, I, sure, I never yeah. really took on that kind of persona, yeah. but, <laughs> 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 but I understand that. Um, and the other thing was, you know, my dad, and bless his heart for it, um, never pushed me into the military. Okay. His dad kind of did, but mm -hmm. um, he said, you know what, do whatever you want. But I'm like, well, if my dad went to West Point mm -hmm. and his dad went to West Point, Point oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I better go to the West Point of film schools, right? Yeah. So uh, my dream very early after I saw Star Wars was to go to USC. Okay. Um, I, I actually did some research and I tell m my students to do this as well. If you're interested in the film industry, research the people that you admire. And I researched Lucas, George Lucas, the creator uh, of Star Wars, and I found out that he went to USC. Right. And I'm like, okay. And, I'm and there's a connection there, which we're going we're gonna to get, get yeah. to in a minute there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right, so Lucas went, to, and also Spielberg, right? Didn't he go well, to Spielberg tried to go in. Oh, okay. and, and he um, donated half of his he, income to the <laughs> He's <laughs> not all? upset that they rejected him, okay. basically, <laughs> because uh, he tried several times, and yeah. they said, no, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, and then he went to Long Beach State, um, but then he became this huge filmmaker, and yeah. he ends up uh, donating tons of money to it. So okay. there's no hard feelings, apparently. Guess, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, my, my dream was to go to USC because Lucas went to USC. Cool. Um, and uh, when we get there, I can talk, talk more about that. But basically, uh, that was what I wanted to do at an early age. Now, was that an easy experience transitioning? Because you went from New York, and then you had all this training with the visual stuff. You're doing animation. You're kind of doing all these creative endeavors. And then you apply to USC, got in immediately and then oh no I wish it was that easy <laughs> Phil <laughs> nothing is that easy you know but no. struggle is builds character right um, I my grades weren't the greatest coming okay. out of high school so I knew going in as a freshman was mm -hmm. out of the question and also the way USC is structured in most film schools in general is you don't start your core classes until your junior year so there's okay. really no reason to be there for your you know freshman and sophomore year and you know USC I heard at that time was expensive Oh yeah, and so I'm like, <laughs> so my parents are like, I think you could go to yeah. junior college, and and I say in, in in many lectures that I'm a proud, you know, product of junior college. So, cool. uh, my parents have split up, uh, which gave me plenty of stuff to write about. So I moved from New York City to the Bay Area, where my dad was, mm -hmm. and uh, in the Bay Area, I went to um, College of San Mateo, which is a junior college up in the Bay Area. Sure. Um, and uh, there, I got all my academics out of the way. Uh, meanwhile, smart move. Yeah. yeah, right. And yeah. it's cheap yeah. that way, <laughs> you know. And I had a great experience in, in community college, and uh, so I was doing classes that would transfer to USC, and then I kept applying to USC, thinking, you know, I'll get in after a year or a couple of years, and and I would get one rejection after another. Wow. And so I was debating, is this really going to happen? And so I actually ended up uh, once I finished at junior college, I went to San Francisco State for a year, and I still applied. And I still didn't get into USC. Now I got into the general school, sure. but getting into the film school—that's that, all that matters. That's all you really want. So that was like three years, right? Had passed, maybe. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. About three years. Uh -huh. And um, so uh, 
the first big leap of faith in my career mm -hmm. was leaving the Bay Area without getting into the film school at USC and just coming down <sighs> and, okay. and crossing my fingers. Yeah. And the next semester I got in. Oh, wow. So, okay, so it congrats. paid off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, that's what I tell people. You know, sometimes you just got to go for it. And if you feel in yeah. your heart, and I knew uh -huh. that I couldn't stay in the Bay Area, I just had to go down to LA and get into USC, and it somehow I was going to work it out. And my dad was a very logical person. Mm -hmm. And so he, he went with me. And, and today, wow. that, I, that really means a lot. Wow. Wow. Well, great story. So then after that, you, all your credits transfer, right? So you're at USC, and you're just, you're just doing film. Are you there for four years? Are you like or just two maybe at that point? And, and what was the takeaway from getting to uh, USC? Oh, well the takeaway is, and this is something I want to share, is that mm -hmm. you know, if you have a dream, you can do it. Yeah. Um, and I want to stress that you know, we didn't have hardly any money. We didn't come from a famous family, sure. you know, but we made it work. USC yeah. offered plenty of grants and loans. Mm -hmm. And I was able to um, you know, go to there for two years and get my degree, because wow. most of my credits transferred. Um, and it was fantastic. I, I, I really had a great experience. I, I remember walking around on the USC yeah. campus just saying, am I really here? <laughs> you know, yeah. it was just, yeah. it was a dream come true. It was, it was awesome. And I just really just, it was, I just, I just dove right into making films and I had a great time. Let's and get into that. So yeah. you've graduated now. And shortly after, you, you begin working. So are you starting to work in animation? Are you, are you doing directing, editing? What's your path right after you graduate? And how do you get involved? Um, well, basically, film schools try to get you to specialize. And mm -hmm. so I was sort of leaning in uh, a camera direction. Okay. Um, the tip that I got was if you work at the stock room, the equipment room, then you get more hands-on experience with cameras. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you can work for a camera supply place you know a crew will come in and, and get you there and you have some experience so I was trying to build up my experiences while still in film school so I did work study at the USC stock great room. idea okay and so that also gave me really a good skills which I'll talk about later but um, of course never th things never work out the way you think it's common thread with the show <laughs> yeah. people are on one path and then it diverts completely and then it comes around full circle 20 years later it's amazing it, it is yeah. amazing and we'll get to that I'm yeah. sure but um, so I met a friend uh, who was working at the um, stock room an older guy mm -hmm. and he said to me and I remember this exactly he said Charlie how would you feel about working in a dark room for 14 hours a day I didn't quite know what he was talking about, yeah. but I said, sure, sure, I'll do it, I'll do it. I and thought you were saying like a dark room, like a room that was just dark. I was, that's creepy, but you're not, <laughs> what's a dark room? I said yes to anything <laughs> at that point, you know, it's, okay. it's a job. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't a job. It was a um, sort of an internship back mm -hmm. then. Um, they said, well, just come in on evenings. We we're working on a film called Showdown. Okay. It's kind of a, a little similar to uh, Karate Kid. Mm -hmm. And um, so we need you on, on weekends to sort of help out with reconning. I mean, it's a little technical term, but reconstitution in the film days means when editors would cut the work print, yep. um, they would put that into the cut, obviously. But then there'd be a lot of leftover pieces, yeah. which you know would drive people crazy. So an assistant or an apprentice would then have to slug the missing piece yeah. that is in the cut for per length so that they could find that where the pieces uh, exist if that it. makes sense because you are also in sync with a soundtrack a full coat mag soundtrack so you have to keep those two in sync it's hot it's tough to remember this but right. in general when you're working on a film picture and sound and film film film, film. Yeah. or even today but but film or video and audio or sound are kept separate all the way up into the final mix interesting okay so in editing that's kind of a, a chore to keep those things separate so reconstitution means you have to slug out exactly the piece that mm -hmm. the editor used so that your picture reel will still be in sync with your mag sound reel got it I so know that was the job that you're you're doing in a in the dark room for fourteen well it, not fourteen it, hours but you're doing yeah. it overnight on weekends or yeah what have you. exactly uh -huh. I I did also on weekends yep. um, they didn't offer any money because they couldn't and yeah. there's a lot of low budget productions but. I was just silly enough to just jump in. And of course, I had my friends that were naysayers, and they were like, why are you working for free? You know, yeah. you're from USC. You should be getting a big job. And I'm like, you know what? There's this misconception that you're going to graduate, and you're just going to direct the next Star Wars, you know, so. I wish that was the case, but <laughs> I, I was realistic, and I saw that this was a good opportunity, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad I took it, because um, the next film that they did, this company and the editor, um, was a film called Double Dragon. 
Ah, I remember Double Dragon. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember it pretty well. Yeah. yeah, Scott Wolf from Party of Five mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. in it. Um, Alyssa Milano from Who's the Boss. I'm to be it. Yeah, it's cool. It's yeah, film. yeah, it's, it's <laughs> it cool. holds up. I think. Oh, cool. Thanks. I'm glad. It's yeah. always nice to hear yeah. that people remember the films we worked on. Yeah. But uh, so action figures. But it's yeah. Fun. Okay. <laughs> well, you can make your own little animation yeah, right. films. Um, so that film was uh, uh, non-union at the beginning. Okay. And then what happened was um, the Guild saw that this film was a bigger budget than a non-union film. Yeah. So they brought it into the Guild. Oh, okay. So is, they, that, is that a common thing that a non-union film gets flipped to union? If, if they think that the film, you know, is a small film, yeah. then, um, then they question it and they look at the budget. And if it has stars, which this one did, yeah. then they're like, well, this really should... Why is should... it non-union? It should be union. Exactly. Is union? Yeah. So well, they, yeah. exactly, yeah. right? So uh, fortunate for me, that film went union, which made me get into the union. Ah, okay. So literally within a week. W which union are we talking about here? This is the Motion Picture Editors Guild. Got it. Okay. So, but if a film goes union, then all the people that are working in any guild will then be into that guild, if that makes sense. So, yes. I mean, SAG is different, I know, but um, you know, any other, you know, camera guilds or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I was not in the guild. And right. some of the ways you can get into the guild is this way, which is if your film was non-union, goes union. So then, this is the second project that you've, you've done. And was that a stroke of luck or is, I mean. Pretty much because, <laughs> um, you know, the way it works in this business is you only get hired by the people you know. And right. I was brought into this because I did a good job on the first film. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, I did want to say that I did get paid. You know, they paid me some money from all, yeah. all the work I did, which was great, unexpected, but nice. And right. Especially if it's union now, I mean. What, no, to. I'm sorry, the first, oh, the first one. one. The okay. first one, they did pay me a little mm -hmm. bit, and they put me on salary for the second one, but then when the second one, Double Dragon, went union, yeah. then I saw my paycheck almost double. And you're like, all right, this, I can get used to this. This isn't bad, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. All of a sudden, my you know ideas about getting into the camera guild and being a camera person was like, yeah. So <laughs> now it's kind of taken a little bit of a, of a turn, so now you're interested in the editing. You're, you're in the guild, which is fantastic. Some people, it takes years. You know, you got to accrue so many hours or... Do you even know like what, what it takes to get in the union today? Yeah, you have to accumulate a certain amount of um, hours on a non-union show. Okay. Um, and, and then I think you have to sort of petition the guild to yeah. say, uh, I think you have to show pay stubs mm -hmm. saying this is how many hours I had on these shows. Mm -hmm. um, you know, therefore I, I believe I'm qualified. And yeah. You might need references from some of the shows you've worked on. Yeah. I don't know because I never had to do it. <laughs> One less thing. All right, so uh, final question. So after that experience with Double Dragon, what was the next project? Did that come easy? And are you continuing down this editing route? Yeah, the next project was a um, martial arts film called Best of the Best Three. Okay. Phil Philip Ree, um, okay. he's a martial artist, and he was also the director. And um, the assistant um, from Double Dragon uh, was the assistant on Best of the Best Three. If you're saying the assistant editor. The assistant right. editor, yes. Okay, so there's an editor, underneath them is an assistant editor. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, let me clarify. Um, I was the apprentice editor on Double Dragon. Okay. So Carol Folgate was the assistant editor. Mm -hmm. And Carol Folgate got hired for Best of the Best Three. And ah. Bert uh, Lovett, was the editor of Best of Best Three. Got it. So Carol recommended me to Bert, and I was brought on as the apprentice on Best of the Best Three. Okay, so that's kind of how it happens. Let's say you, you do a good job. Usually your boss will get hired, and then they're like, you know, I'm gonna bring that, that guy who I had before. You know, I liked his work. And then before you know it, you're moving from apprentice to assistant, and then eventually to editor. So that's the hierarchy of editing. Am I missing any steps? No, there? no, that's correct. If you wanna go through the traditional guild route mm -hmm. that's the way you do it yeah. um, it was a little bit better structured back in the day there was a little bit more organization as far as apprentice assistant editor mm -hmm. the editor would spend more time with the assistant and they would be in each other's rooms well the assistant would be in the editor's room learning you know just watching yeah. him unfortunately today we don't have that much kind of that much opportunity or that amount of time to to sort of help them learn so you just kind of have to cut scenes on your own. So that's yeah. what would happen is the editor would say, okay, you know, you're an assistant, you want to move up to editing. Well, come in early, cut some scenes, mm -hmm. show me what you got, and then I'll give you some critique, and then you'll cut some more. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Even when I was at that young age, 
Bert Lovett would uh, give me a couple scenes and I would cut them and then we'd review them. And so I was learning nice. uh, even yeah. at that age. And I, would, I did a gag reel on Best of the Best 3. I took the outtakes yeah. and put it together with a piece of music. And this is a mag film. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you always want to do something creative in your off hours. Right, well, when we get back, I want to really delve into the nitty gritty of editing. Okay? Cool. Look cool. forward to it.